Humongous opportunity missed for Baba Rose as they failed to get the three points against QPR, which of course fails to get us into the top six. But what about the future for Tony Mowbray? Is there any hope? We'll take a look at it next. That's right, folks, back on to another match review. This time, picking apart Blackburn Rovers' latest shambles up against QPR. And we'll get to that in just one second. If you're new to the channel, stop what you're doing, swap what you're doing, and smash the old subscribe. Give you back up to the little things. Blackburn Rovers' latest. Uh, Chapter of the World Football League, you know, here. Under Waruski, that's right, yes. Uh, audition failed for a lot of players today, as of course, uh, yeah, we missed our opportunity to get into the top six, even if a win was to come our way today. Uh, we would not have made it. We would not have made it anyway. But, of course, it would have kept up the hope, kept up the belief in a big, big month of games for us. Of course, chances are, are there for us, but we are missing them. Of course, we've only got so many lives. <coughs> and right now, we have not got the quality to get into that top six. We'll talk about that in a minute. I want a big, big shout-out to the Patreons. You know who you are. The VIP band of brothers that support the channel in uh, in the old, uh, of course, by, by pumping the money behind the scenes. I do appreciate that. If you are interested, there is a link somewhere <coughs> across the screen somewhere. So make sure you check that out. Out. And of course, check me out on these other bits down here. Twitter, Twitch, Facebook, all that kind of stuff. Uh, what else have we got on there? Of course, YouTube. Well, I'm there right here right now. Anyway, let's get deep in and pick apart the game. That, of course, was QPR. So here we go. Here's the tail of the tape. That really matters. 1-0 was the final score for QPR. Yoan Barbe on the 54th minute. Uh, very much too little, too late for Rovers, as you can see there. We have all the gear, no idea. 13 shots on the day for Rovers, five on target, and none in the back of the net. As for QPR, 11 shots for them, two on target, one win in the back of the net. That's right. They had more possession than us. Uh, they had more passes, of course, and, uh, and again, the tail of the tape does not matter. The numbers here, pass accuracy, 68%, 68% for Rovers. But guess what? The score that really matters is that we're 1-0 up there. Which QPR got the goal. Of course, the goal coming, it was a scrappy bit of play. Uh, I think it was a corner or, or a free kick that was pretty ugly anyway. Ball everywhere, bodies everywhere. Uh, ultimately, lands to Yon Barbe. And of course, uh, toe pokes it home into the back of the net. Bodies everywhere. But of course, uh, we could not respond from that. And that was the one and only goal. Uh, and pretty much, I, I'd say, if, I, if I, I can't really remember QPR threatening any more than that. There was, of course, other shots. But a lot of bodies were blocked. A lot of efforts were blocked by the, the bodies of the Rovers men. Of course, uh, Braithwaite was involved in there. Travis Davenport also had some good clearances to deny QPR any more additions to that score uh, scoreline but of course they would only need the one at the end of it Rovers did have a, a couple, quite a few opportunities Armstrong had a couple of sitters that he should have converted Elliot as well with point black range uh, and if you're an old man like me you would remember Ronnie Rosenthal's miss there was one like that for, for Harvey Elliott and uh, yeah it's, it's, it's bad it's bad folks because this was our chance this was our chance to get into those top six spots uh, or at least put the pressure on the top six but we'll look at the situation at the table in just a minute. Of course, let's take a look at, of course, some uh, other numbers of matter. Let's take a look at the starting lineups first. Deng between sticks. He was, of course, the deciding factor between these two sides. Without him in between sticks, I think Rovers could have at least got something out of this. Uh, but, of course, three of the back. Three of the bloody back, people. Whenever there's a team that plays three or five of the back, we can't seem to be at our top top, uh, top flavour. So, Ro uh, Moby needs to come up with a, a system to counteract this. And there's no point changing the system when they're down the final five, five, final five or ten minutes of the game we need to be changing things pretty much on the get-go if we're not if we're not in front by 45 uh, and especially if we're chasing the game you, 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 it's here it's here you should go track back yourself have a look back get your analysts out there have a look back the last time that we played against three or five of the back and tell, tell me the, the the recent results that we've had against them it's not gonna be favorable we might have won one or two i don't even know but but to be honest with you i know we have struggled and today was a prime example we should be beating these we should be beating these you've got all the case like I, I say this and i all the time we have got all the fancy pants ingredients that you want to make the finest cake in the world we have it we have we have the chocolate that is of course harvey Elliott. we've got the the cream that is adam armstrong we got the eggs which is travis we've got the flipping flour that is of course kaminsky and you can put them all together and you can make the best cake in the world but right now i don't know what we're making we're making a bag bag bigger bag of shite that's what we're making you've got all the ingredients bloody get let's get the shit together you've only in, in all honesty and again you've got to look at the rovers hierarchy here i don't know I'm not, I like Mowbray, I think he's a fantastic man, and, and, and I'm not saying Mowbray out or Mowbray in or whatever. 
But the Rovers hierarchy need to come and look at this. They need to, and the, the owners have must have some sort of, some sort of desire and passion to see their project that is Blackburn Rovers do well. And of course, if we have got all the ingredients and they're putting their money, their, their seven million pounds or whatever it is we pay for Big Bad Brothers and the five million pounds that we pay for Sam Gallagher, the X amount of pounds that we pay for whatever, 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 we want to see a return. The owners must see that. The wagon must see that. And you know, I know there's mates rates and all that kind of stuff, but I can only go so far. Uh, and I'm. I'm, I'm on the on the fence to say, and I, well, I'm, I'm on the mindset to say that Moby has until the end of the season. If we cannot get top six, and I'm just talking about top six. I'm not talking about promotion. I'm talking about top six. Show us that you can get in those playoffs. Show us that you have the mentality and the skill set and the and the formations and the plan Bs and the plan Cs and the plan Ds to change things up when you're playing up against three at the back or when the shit hits the fan. Because today it was more like shit the bed. Let's just throw everything at them. All all the attackers uh, take off Nyambe for whatever reason. Uh, and and then hopefully something will land nicely for us. You can only ride your luck a little bit. You can only ride your luck. You need to be delivering the goods on the grand scheme of things and not be luck. Just hopefully just going and throwing shit at it and hopefully something will stick. Uh, so, yeah, we got, we got found out today. Again, three at the back. And we're second of the Rovers line. We, 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 and to be honest, I was not far wrong from this. I think my only my only thing that I got wrong with my preview pick was, of course, left back. And that was, a, 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 of course, a, a call from Big Man upstairs, of course. You know, of course, Douglas had been pulled because uh, of parent duty, of course, his wife giving birth or whatever. So it was Kaminsky, Bell, Branthwaite, Lennon, and Naomi, as I kind of mostly predicted. Travis, Davenport, they're supposed to be a partnership. They're supposed to be something something that we should be getting excited about. There was some good defending duties by both of them, but Rothwell in the middle, I was excited to see that as well, and I was optimistic that he could be the driving force for that. It didn't work out that way. Gallagher was a bag of shit. Elliot was a bag of shit, and Armstrong up top as well. And in fact, let's give you my man, man match ratings. Of course, Kaminsky with a five, and that's no no disrespect to him. I just thought he didn't have that much to do. A lot of the defending duties were the guys in front of him, and that's where the numbers come in here. Bell with a six, even though he was shit. I give him a six. Uh, Branthwaite with a seven. Of course, he threw his body on the line a couple of occasions and he played for the badge he doesn't even belong to us but he's played for the bloody badge Gallagher you gotta play for the bloody badge you gotta play for the badge Rothwell you gotta play for the badge flipping everybody else Branthwaite's playing for the badge he doesn't even belong with us uh, and that's what I like to see about that Lennon with the 70 was showing commanding headers at the back so I thought they were decent even though we got mugged off with that one bit of shitness from QPR Niambi with a 7 I'm a bit, a, bit, a bit generous today Niambi I thought you were a little bit average uh, today but I'm gonna give you a 7 because I like it and I want you to sign the bloody contract Travis of course uh, uh, tenacity in there. He, he was showing some some uh, dynamism when he was playing for the badge. Rothwell was a was a ghost today. I didn't even know he was on the field. As was Davenport. I thought he was okay. Uh, I might be a bit harsh on Davenport. I should be giving him a six. Gallagher with a four. Goodness gracious me! What are we doing with him up top? I think we're wasting him. I think we're wasting Gallagher. You know what? Uh, we'll talk more about the formation. Uh, Armstrong, a six. I think I'm being. I think I might have got the numbers mixed up. I don't even know. And Elliot with a five. I thought it was one of his poor performances today. And again, we can't. You can't really say that it was down to the man itself. It could be down to the QPR just cancelling each other out. But you've got to show your quality. You've got. If you are want to be in that discussion as as playoff contenders or whatever, you have to show your quality. And today we didn't do that. We got mugged off. We got we got blindsided by a bit of stupidity, a bit of disgustingness, and mayhem in the box. But ultimately. Led to a goal and let's keep you taking on three points but yeah we've we've got all these we've got all these players and more we've got Dak on the bench we've got Broughton on the bench we've got uh, uh, Elliot Bennett coming back we've got we've got other other key ingredients as well that could make up a really good side but are we are we kind of getting our hands tied by 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 being required to play certain player at a certain point in the thing I think there must come to a point where we think you know what that we need to do something else. We need to do something else. Maybe we should go two down the middle. Maybe we should go with a three-five-two or something like that. Uh, and maybe have two down the middle, like an Armstrong and maybe a Brereton or or, or, or a, a Gallagher as strikers. And then have Dak in the middle as a, as an attacking a midfielder. And then yes, where does Elliot go into that? I don't know. I'm thinking. I'm thinking right here, right now, as a three-five-two with 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 sort of wing backs. I think you can have Elliot down there, but then you'll lose Nyambi. You'll lose Nyambi, of course. But I don't know. I don't know. You need to have to make sacrifice. And again, if, if if some impartial person comes in that has no affiliation with these, what t what team would he pick? He would pick X, Y, Z, of course. But we have to do something. We can't be getting mobbed off left, right, and centre. If this is the season, this this should be the season for me. And uh, in all honesty, if Mowbray doesn't do it, uh, gets in the top six this season, I think it's time. I think it's bloody time uh, because you can only go so far. Uh, let's take a look at some of the other numbers. Of course, this is their match ratings. Uh, they pretty much were, were similar to me, actually. Kaminsky with a six, so I went the five. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Pretty much close to the money. 
know, it's pretty much clear. Elliot with a five. Uh, yeah, I won't, I'm Armstrong with a with with woeful. Uh, they gave the man of the match to Barbe with the goal. I think that's harsh. I think Deng deserved to be man of the match. Macaulay one came on, of course. Uh, as you can see down there at the bottom there, the graphic, some other shots and stuff like that. 15 shots for Rovers, uh, 12 for, for QBR, 53 percent possession for Rovers. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know where 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 the the correct data is coming from. A uh, pass success rate seven percent for Rovers. We won the aerial duels, but we were shit at corners, as we bloody were. If you're a heat, uh, shot man, here's where all the shots took place. Look at that long range effort there by QPR. But the goal was probably uh, this one right here. Right here, I think that was the goal. I should really, I uh, can't click it now. Uh, but again, shots, blah, you can see all the numbers here that matter. But ultimately, the only number that matters is right up here. And it's a one nil win for bloody QPR. If you heat map man, though, look at this. Again, Rovers, all the ball, all the gear, no idea. Have a lot of ball. But ultimately, we don't do anything with it. QPR, sporadic, sporadic touches. They get a bit of magic right here. And they put it in the back of the bins. That's pretty much... Uh, pretty much all that you can say about that. Um, meanwhile, you've heard what I've had to say. What about the gaffer? What did Tony Mowbray have to say after the match? Well, here he is coming at you, and I think he's not going to be nice. Yeah, yeah, it's a, another frustrating day. We've had a few of them uh, on the road this year, I think, where we've um, generally been the better team and yet haven't come away with anything. It's uh, a bit frustrating. Missed some chances, as you say. Um, a really, really soft goal to lose. I, you know, I, I can't really remember them creating a chance, to be honest, but... Um, so to come away with nothing is really frustrating, yeah. Disappointing day. Yeah, I suppose so. Listen, I, bottom line, I'm more interested in about us, really, and um, being a bit more ruthless. Um, you know, we had some pretty good chances there to win this football match, and they, for whatever reason today, they didn't go in. And um, you, know, you can't come to these places and, and create dozens of chances, but um, you know, I think we uh, created enough to win a game today, but um, you know, I'd definitely not lose this game. But we didn't manage it and it's frustrating for us all. Um, there's no intention for people not to take the chances, of course. It's, um, and, you know, maybe there's been once or twice this year we've, we've scored a late goal and won a game that was pretty tight and we maybe didn't deserve all three points. We have to take it on the chin, I suppose, sometimes when it doesn't, um, doesn't fall for us. Uh, you know, they worked extremely hard to try and keep us out and I um, thought their goalkeeper played pretty well, you know, and it was just one of them days it wasn't to be. Well, I think the, last, the second half of the first half, I think, is uh, we, we got right on top. I think the first 20 minutes they made it really difficult. They pushed on. They, it was a competitive game. We had to, you know, stand our ground really. And um, there was a few bookings early on for both teams. And um, yeah, and then when the game settled down, we got on top. Uh, we, you know, pretty hopeful at half time we'd go on and win the game and um, had to make our superiority count. <sighs> and as we've said, a scrappy wide free kick, a sloppy free kick to give away to be honest, Ryan shouldn't have put a foot in there I think so you could see all day the referee was was a bit pernickety on free kicks and he gave a free kick and uh, it just put us under a bit of pressure to defend our box I think Lenahan heads the first ball it's their guy's back, it drops down Jared clears it but slaps it off his right foot off balance and the boy sticks it in but um, never mind It's we have to take it on the chin as I said and move on to the next one I, said, I, I suppose so, I, you know, I expect Adam to score you know but um, I don't want to be critical of Adam Armstrong. I think he's, you know, he's done amazingly well this year. But um, you know, he'll be disappointed himself that he didn't stick it in the bottom of the net. You know, I think. Um, well, there you go. We have to, as I said, it's. Uh, I don't even want me to say the team played all right in spells. We weren't brilliant. I think. I think lots of enthusiasm. I think just a bit more craft, a bit more knowledge, and yet we have brought, a, you know, a relatively young team out there, and it, it looked a little bit like that at, at times that we needed a bit more know-how and a bit more nous to pick the right final pass to score the goal. Yeah, it's disappointing for Lewis, of course. He, uh, he's done his lateral knee ligament again. He had an operation on it earlier in the season and it's the same injury, I think. So, um, you know, until it's scanned, we'll have to wait and see, but it's a bit down in there at the moment. Be on camera and tell you it's a season ender, you know, let's wait and see what the scan says. We're hopeful that it's not as bad as it was last time, and um, but it's the same area of his, of his outside of his knee, yeah. Oh, what's been going on on social media? Let's take a look at it, shall we? Over on the Twitter sphere, Lewis Hartley, he likes to do this. He, he brings it to my attention. Same old, same old. Disappointed but not surprised. Typical of Rovers when we are close to the players and get into the top six. We bottle it. Armour is in very poor form and couldn't finish his dinner at the moment. 12 shots, four on target is shocking. We move to Friday.
Jay Preston is on Friday. And maybe that's the way. Maybe you, you, you go, you, you'll be brutal. And I know there's a lot of goals in him. Maybe you say, you know what, son? You've been shit. We've got to drop you. You've been playing left, right, and center. Let's give Brereton a shot. Maybe give Dak a shot. Maybe go to the 4 2 3 1. I don't know. But let's make some changes. Sean Fox says, Rovers bottle it again. Not surprising. Awful result. Not a terrible performance, but not good enough. Defensive error. Awful waste. Elliot disappointing. Rockwell hot and cold. Better liability. Dak invisible. Malbish subs. Rob us of any fluidity. Poor, but typical Rovers. Meanwhile, kicking off other Rick Sharp said this. Of course, Jonas undone by a set play at one end, while the other, they remain uh, a real source of frustration. Rovers didn't take advantage of a really good spell leading up to halftime. One golden chance for Armstrong at 1 0, but the closing stages were a bit of a mess. Yes, they were. That's being polite. Uh, Carl Wick said this. If we brought uh, Howard Bells in to replace Naomi, then send him back. No idea why we took Naomi off. Travis Gallagher and Lennon play very well. Elliot was really poor again. Armstrong, again, missed two very good chances. I think we were the better team, but it means nothing really. Adam Henning said this typical Rovers uh, get within touching distance of top six. We lose. We have a squad that is better than an eighth or ninth place team. Uh, Callum Atkins said this. No bottle, no composure is the problem. Even our top goal scorer needs 50 chances to score. Look at Ivan Tony now. He's breaking away. Of course, Armstrong was level with him uh, for a good part of the season, but now Ivan Tony showing his quality, uh, or maybe just quality from uh, from the, the rest of the team. I'm sick of this uh, yo yo team. That's Jack Walmsley. If you want to get top six, you don't win one, uh, one month and lose the other. You've got to be consistent. Unfortunately, we aren't that. Uh, we have, of course, Mr. Nobody. How uh, we lost that is beyond me. Every time we get a chance of breaking into top six, we blow it. Plenty of games left, though. That's been a little bit positive. Uh, Ant Antics, I think he was on the old stream. I think um, Mowry out depends on the next five winnable games. Don't get me wrong. I know we won uh, three out of six this year. Of course, that's our first defeat in 2021. I've got complete blitz past that. But they have been undeserved. We need a manager with passion and players with more experience to help the young boys out with right and wrong. Nicolo Belinsky said the typical memory football no backbone no clue what to do when we go down clueless absolutely clueless our 11 is uh, too good for this dinosaur let me guess he's frustrated Mowbray out Roy Chowdhury 86 said this there will come a time when the owners will just stop putting money in Tony got what he wanted and more yet every time we get anywhere near the person he bottles it he just can't motivate the players enough been happening uh, for too long now Matty Core said this and this is why we always struggle to do get anywhere near the players if we don't uh, get even a single point for somewhat easy games and dominate games uh, we will not succeed and waste time and money. Mowbray really needs to decide whether he wants to win or not. For up eggs, eats as it it and meanwhile elsewhere in the championship let's take a little look at it shall we We're right here right now these are the results of course yesterday Swansea put two past Norwich of course to get themselves back in contention for top two uh, meanwhile of course Watford of course got their own aspirations for top six or maybe even top two could only muster a draw against Carbon Tree Cardiff got back to win anyways with a 2 win. of course Mick McCarthy pulling the strings these days uh, good win for Brentford to keep themselves there. also in the top two discussion beating Middlesbrough keeping us in the discussion uh, albeit begrudgingly uh, with a 4-1 win uh, for Brentford and the yeah, Emil splashed a dot dash dot against Sheffield Wednesday to give them more headache Forest with a 3-0 win over Wickham to put them in trouble Bournemouth with a late 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 win it looks like with a 3-2 win for Birmingham who could be on their way to a bit of a relegation dog fight uh, rather than uh, beat Preston which is good as the next opponents of course Luton Town had to do, do get out to a draw as did Stoke and Reading how about of course what's going to go on midweek well of course there's a three games this midweek rather than against Cardiff not sure which way I want to go on that one. Shiver wins against Wickham. Don't really care about that one either. Reading against Brentford will be fruity. And I think I want Brentford to win to put Reading in a bit of doubt. Uh, of course, uh, moving forward, Rovers will take it on Preston on Friday. We'll have a watch on for that one. It'll be late, late night. Hopefully you get the beers in, that sort of stuff. Then we have Forest against Bournemouth uh, on Saturday morning. Derby against Borough. Norwich against Stoke. Uh, we have uh, Huddersfield against Wickham. Watford against Bur Bristol City. Reading against Millwall. Cardiff against Coventry. Rotherham against QP. Bloody ah. Shiver wins against Swansea in the Battle of the S's. Of course, Birmingham against Luton Town. And into Sunday, we have Brentford against. Barnsley of course this oh I can't I can't I was just, I was just thinking there about. so I got excited for a minute but I thought no uh, this is the table as it stands uh, Rovers have a game in hand that we have a game in hand and that game is massive even though it is against Swansea uh, pretty much as you were Stoke maybe closed in on us with a point Bristol City they also got a defeat Preston so the teams below us did do that well of course Mill will maybe Cardiff uh, further down the pecking order but of course Middlesbrough they got a bit of a battering um Bournemouth, they got the win, but a win for us in our next game. We'll be back to three points. We're back to three points. We have to play Bournemouth again. Watford are going to trail off a little bit. We have a, we have a game in hand on those guys as well. So it is it is doom and gloom. It is a huge opportunity, Miss Rovers. But we'll take it. We'll take this situation right now. And again, it is a weird old year. It's a weird old oh. bloody year. Uh, that's what I've got to say for you, folks. That's all all I've got in the in the locker. Again, we'll be back again uh, next week with the build up for Preston. So make sure you come by for that. And if you're a new, bang your thumbs up, bang your subscribe. Of course, check out the links down below. 
Twitter, Twitter, Twitch, Facebook, they're all in there. And again, if you want to support the channel in another way, you could become the latest member of the Patreon gang by right, checking out that link down there, patreon.com forward slash Rovers Seas. But to the no Rovers, huge opportunity missed. We look shit. And to be honest with you, we've looked shit for a while. We've managed to get some wins under our belt and we managed to keep the, the engine moving, keep us ticking on. But I think, Mowbray, you've got five days now to come up with, a, with at least a plan B or something to play to your strengths. Armstrong's a dud right now. I don't know what's going on in his mentality. I don't know what's in his, in his porridge or whatever it is. It needs to be changed. Something needs to be happening uh, with Rovers to get ourselves moving in the right direction. Because right now we are stagnant. We are stagnant. And, and right now, if things keep going the way we're going, and again, with a bit of local pride on Friday, we need to get back to winning ways. And if we can win on Friday, when all eyes are on us, all sky cameras and everything is on us, we could go to seventh uh, and put the pressure on the likes of Mid Middlesbrough, the likes of Bournemouth, the likes of Watford, and then maybe get the, the belief back again. But we need something to change. Right now, we look like we're, we're running through mud. We're going nowhere. We're absolutely going nowhere. Even though the, the optimism there, the players there, you have the ingredients. Make me a masterpiece, Tony. Make me a masterpiece. Make us happy. And again, I'll see you all very soon. Until then, though, smash the thumbs up, smash the subscribe. I'll see you all next time. Until then, be safe out there, mask up. But of course, always love Rovers, even though I'm pissed as, as it can be. I'm raging, raging inside. Until then, I'm out. <laughs>